Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 381. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to review the questions asked and answered on the uh, um, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net and um, he's also a Google t um, product expert on the uh, uh, AdWords sorry, the Ed, AdSense uh, community. And Michael fischer Kirchner, he is uh, uh, president of um, a, 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 an SEO uh, meetup meet group not far from Silicon Valley um, on the uh, west coast of the USA. And um, um, David Rosam is an internet marketer, a leading internet marketer based uh, in West Sussex um, uh, in the sunny coast of the, the UK. Well, that's, that's what they say anyway. They, they say it's sunny. That, that's sun out there, I tell you. <laughs> I, I do remember it. I have seen it before once or twice. <laughs> And Tim Kepper is um, web, webmaster of onlineownership.com. Uh, he released uh, a, um, a free guide for local SEO uh, this week. Uh, no, no, you, you talked about it this week. You, you released it. Yeah, it was a while back, but I just talked about it when I noticed uh, that had 17,500 downloads. Yeah. Yes. Um, and... Uh, Tim can be found at onlineownership.com. All right, um, we have uh, nine questions uh, tonight. Uh, let me see. Um, first one uh, is from Misam Zaidi. Um, it's titled Using a Keyword at, at the Start of uh, a Meta Title. Um, and he said, hi, is it important to focus keyword at the start of the uh, meta title? Um, no. Um, it's a good idea to use it in the title because the title is important and you, your, your focus keyword must be important uh, or else you wouldn't be using it. Um, but this idea of, you, of having to use it at the start, no. Um, I think that's... From Yoast, um, is it from Yoast? I think it's from Yoast. It sounds like a Yoast thing, anyway. Um, so yeah, just use it naturally in your focus, in your title tag. Um, doesn't matter where, as long as it's within the the right number of letters. Um, there you go. Thank you, uh, David. Anybody else? All right, uh, let's go to number two on our run list. Uh, this one from Carmen Chan, um, who asked a question titled, I think I accidentally killed all my traffic yet within two weeks. Uh, she goes on to say, Mayday, guys. Uh, I think I accidentally killed all my traffic within two weeks because I removed the external sources hyperlinks. My site is medical and health related. If I am to relink them now, will the traffic go up again? Uh, where can I check if my rankings are the only thing affected or that the entire site uh, has been penalised? Ooh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you're medical and health related, um, you probably should be making sure um, that you know, you're citing your, your, your sources. Um, and it's something that, yeah, Google is trying to determine authoritative and, and worthwhile sites, particularly in the health space. And I would say that uh, one of those things is that um, you're citing uh, uh, those sources. So if you're not doing that, that could definitely um, be an impact to you. Now, you can use Google Search Console um, to kind of see if it's just, yeah, 
rankings versus anything else. Uh, you've got your analytics will show you kind of your traffic if it's accidentally uh, a removal of your analytics tracking. Um, you should be able to see it outside of any uh, organic search traffic if those numbers had gone down in some similar way. Um, the thing to be aware of is whether or not the change and loss of your traffic is going to come back up in, in a short time frame. So if it is related to a quality update, you're going to have to wait until the next quality update for your site to get back in. So that's something to just be aware of if it is related to that. Um, but outside of that, yeah, um, I would say put those external links back in, uh, check your, your traffic numbers in both analytics and console. Um, just double check that it's not uh, uh, some kind of tracking issue. Excellent, Marco. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, let's um, um, go. To yes, I'm go ahead. I think <laughs> I'm just trying to. No, I'm just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just. I just. Have we had anything in the last two weeks? Um, I don't think removing some. Citation like mm. would kill the entire. Yeah, you're right. It, it's it's probably hasn't been in the last two weeks, huh? But would it kill an entire site? In the medical health like, space, if it if it was quality for sure, I could see that. But outside yeah. of, you're right that it hasn't been. I can't so see. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, no, the the last. Uh, was July twenty? Uh, and it also depends when this was July. Going. Yeah, there was one in July. Actually, actually. could be nearly a week ago that this question was posted. We haven't got a date on it. All these uh. well. So yeah, it could be. Yeah, so whilst you're looking at those external links, I would certainly also, in the health sector, I would certainly um, look at your about page. Um, any of your clinicians' team pages, you know, your, those team pages, make sure they're accurately... Um, accurately filled in with the, the degrees, the medical schools or whatever they, universities they, um, for, you know, attended. Um, make sure um, that any external references, I don't know what country you're in exactly. So do, do doctors um, have uh, license numbers typically there's a medical board that references them. You can reference their medical practitioner number on the site. Google can, you know, then determine. And the only reason I say about the external, you know, the citation sort of sources, um, I have taken a, a medical for a vascular surgeon. We, we, we don't cite any sources, but we did really beef up their... Uh, where they've been cited, make sure that those are correctly referenced, um, things like that, their medical numbers, so, you know, so, so to make sure that if any, if, if joining the dots for Google, that this guy is, is qualified, legit, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, uh, and they are improving. But I would certainly, in the health space, make sure that all your um, people that are writing your authors that are completely filled out, um, uh, any of your clinicians, uh, things like that. Make sure that you can join, Google can join the dots on, on who is, you know, qualified in that sense. Um,
Okay, is that it? Well, I could ramble on for another half hour if you want, Jim. Well, you know, um, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's um, moving right along. Let's go to number. Uh, um, oh, Mike, we're losing Mike. He's uh, heading off to take a call. Um, oh, good one, Mike. Stay safe. do. Okay. Um, all right, let's um, move on to number uh, three on our run list. Uh, this one from Zach Mass, Messi. Uh, Messi, is it? Um, he said, I'm finding keyword research very difficult. Uh, um, he goes on to say, can anyone give any insight? I'm starting a new blog site. I'm finding keyword research very difficult. I can't find any with low ranking keywords that have low domain authority sites ranking for them. The niche is crafts. Um, this is my second site. I had no issues with my first site. Okay. I should point out Michael Martinez's um, answer um, and uh, thank people like Michael who answer questions through the week, making our job so much easier and uh, um, making Damasio questions such a valuable resource. Now, I interrupted somebody there. Can you go? You ahead? interrupted me, Jim. Was you it you, Jim? You interrupted me. Yes. Oh, we'll be me, sure. Jim. If you're gonna, if you're why gonna, do you keep doing this to me, Tim? Tim. <laughs> why, why, Lord, why me? Oh, cry the gods! Because you fall <laughs> all the time, Tim. That's why. <laughs> the, ha the house where people care is somewhere down the road, Tim. <laughs> right. Okay. So here is Zach. Um, I'm kind of finding your, your question a little bit difficult. So uh, I'm finding keyword research difficult. Your 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 niche is crafts. You're finding it keyword research difficult. I don't kind of understand. Like I'm leaving out the whole bit between like that have low DA sites ranking for. I don't. I really don't understand what that is all about um, for keyword research. Uh, for your own craft site. Now, if you've created a niche craft site, surely you, you must have some idea on like the type of crafts that you have on this site. Um, and then those particular crafts, you expand out. Um, Yeah, I, like when you say difficulty keyword research, are you? Hmm. I think I he's think... trying to look for low hanging fruit, um, Tim. Yeah. Um, right. Um, you know, there's there are several several ways in here, aren't there? No. Uh, sorry, am I am I stamping on you, Tim? I think you. No, 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 definitely not. Um, yeah, I suppose when something doesn't really, uh, there's not too much subject written on it. Uh, but this is where you kind of need to tap into someone who is in, the, in that industry. Um, because people are always out there asking questions. Um, and they may not ask it online. So that's why it's like sort of keyword tools and things don't typically do it. But, you know, if you tap into the local arts and crafty you know, hippie chick down the road, um, you know, take her out for a coffee and uh, and get talking about that particular craft. Um, and what do people ask her on? Like, you, you know, you, sometimes tool can't give you anything, you know, everything as such. Uh, so that's, that's Tim's dating uh, advice for this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
yeah, I, th I think there's several ways into this. What, one is what uh, Michael says, and uh, take it a bit further. Um, in other words, start writing your, your stuff. Write your stuff that you know about, you think this is going to be useful to people in the, in the crafts niche. Um, do that. Then see how you're getting on. See what ranks, what brings in, uh, what brings in traffic. Get what brings engagement. You know what? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to sell, um, sell craft materials? Is this um, something that you're trying to sell uh, craft yeah. courses? So so is, yeah, I just chucked in like, and I'm assuming craft. Is, is a catch-all phrase um, but I just used also asked asked.com and I just chucked in crafts and there's already um, you know half a dozen sort of questions on crafts um, which is a great start for you because a lot of these lead into other questions and then can lead into more and then they can lead into more subject matter that people are asking about um what's that other one um is it pe answer my oh, question people oh, also are public. Yeah. yeah answer the public i wonder what they've got on crafts um and i'm guessing crafts is in the us of course i am just ser searching uk um but on the u for crafts in onto the public, uh, it's loading. There's another 77 odd questions about that. So, you know, that, that, that could be a good start. That could yeah. be a basic start to to just get the, you know, the creativity, the, the creative juices flowing. But you you can you can do the 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 old styley and that's not to say it's bad because it's old you can do proper keyword research from from the bottom up um and use a good tool to to do your keyword research um and you'll you'll be able to follow it through and you'll be able to see which are the the low uh the, the low competition um key phrases and um, how many searches there are on them and how your competitors rank for them and all those things you can, you know if you use something like sem rush you will be able to do all those things but there are others out there as well uh, just happens to be the one that i use because they're good enough to uh, let uh, let me have a a free subscription and some some other people on here as well um, but SEM Rush is excellent if you want to use, if you want to go down the traditional key phrase research route. And that's that's going to be much more accurate looking at low DA sites. Um, we're not very happy about uh, domain authority <laughs> around here. So um, uh, I'm I'm worried about taking that as a as an analytical um view uh, an analytical way into keyword research um so that that's that's the answer from the other angle thank you david you're okay tim i'm always okay jim okay trust me mate I'll let you fucking know when I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's <laughs> move on to number um, one of um, Ferez Ahmed's questions. Uh, it's titled Removing a Page from a Search Result. Ferez said, uh, I have an e commerce website and my main keyword is ranking on a Google search engine results page with a URL attached to lots of filters in a query stream. And this is where it gets interesting. He said, so I decided to block all query string 
attached with URLs through the robot's text file. Um, and then things began to go pear-shaped after that. Uh, I won't read out the, the rest of the question. It, it can be seen on, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, but before, you know, I, I, I just ask why, um, um, if Google is happy um, linking, uh, why not just accept that and, and leave it as it is? Um, why might go go through all this pain with the robots text and no indexing and so on? I think that's the one thing he didn't do. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll leave it to you guys. Have at it. Well, this is rather worrying because I, I agree with you, Jim. I, I have a um, I have a general feeling about most things in life that if it works, don't touch it, and if it's if it's ranking and bringing you happy campus to your site then don't touch it. Mm -hmm. uh, the question that I have or had is I don't understand why you um, didn't approach it with a canonical first rather than going full on like TXT um, <laughs> on the on the query on the on the parameter URL. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, canonicalization would, would have been the first thing I would have done. Um, and robots TXT is probably the bluntest tool that you can use to achieve um, what you're trying to do. And I don't think it's achieving what you are trying to do because Google can see this page, but it knows that page exists because it has called it before. And presumably, there are links pointing to that page as well. Um, so, OK, if you don't want that page to be shown, then perhaps no index. But refusing access to the Googlebot is probably not the best thing you can do in this situation. <laughs> Google and Mesa. Go ahead. I say keep the Google bot happy. <laughs> let them let the Google pot, bot into the party. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's um, move, on, move on. Thank you, uh, Tim, Mesataki, and David. Um, let's move on to number four, five, that is, on our run list. From Joshua Wells, uh, he said, I want to rank organically in a city and uh, in local maps. Um, Joshua goes on to say, uh, SEO question, I have, local, I have a local business website with multiple physical locations and I've created city pages that I want to rank in that city organically and in local maps. Uh, do I create citations pointing to those city pages to help with maps ranking, or just to the main URL of the website? So I think you've got a little bit discombobulated with some stuff here. So if you have physical locations, you have obviously, you've got GMB pages, physical locations. Um, those are your location pages because you already have a location, a physical thing in that location, right? So those are what you need to create. Uh, those those are, is what is going to connect to your GMB page because that's a location page for that actual store. Hours, customers, uh, telephone numbers, um, uh, you know, anything about the, the, the store for, for people to find in, in search. Um, you can then actually have those um, nested into their cities as, as, you know, if you've got a lot of them, 
you've got five in this city, two in this city, three, and so you would then have category pages for people to find their nearest location. But you don't build citations to a category page or what you call the city page. Your, your citations are, you know, basically about a business. So it would be the location page. And the, the, the citation would be built for that business, that, that the name of that business, which I'm assuming are all the same, but the name of that business, the unique address of that location, their local telephone number. Um, and it would be linked to the actual location page for that location. Those location pages you can segment and, and have them live in city pages, um, but you, 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 you would never build um, you know, citations for those city pages. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? I see muted microphones everywhere. All right, let's go to number six on our run list. Um, and uh, I hope that jo Joshua uh, um, is happy. Uh, Nick Dawes asked the question titled, Best Tools to Use to Find Search Volume for a Keyword Slash Phrase. Nick said, hey, guys, uh, I'm new to keyword research. I was wondering which Google tool is best to use to find search volume for a keyword slash phrase. So I've been following a, a Udemy course that, that uses Keyword Planner. But however, it seems uh, Google uh, have, um, have updated the tool since the course, the course was created. It no longer displays a search volume. However, it does show that the number of clicks and impressions for a given keyword. Not necessarily. He said, I understand there are a number of third party tools available for this, but I was curious if it was still possible to get the search volume data from Google directly. All, 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 all data is pretty much guesstimated. I mean, even when you had the keyword volume on like ads and things like that, um, you know, the, the, on the non-paid, but you know, all you need to do is just create an, a, a, uh, an AdWords account to see them. That's all you need to do. Um, but, um, but yeah, they, they're, they're all pretty much inaccurate in that sense. I mean, Google's only based on, on, on trends. Those aren't, like every single month guaranteed search queries. Other keywords tools are based also upon what, you know, partly on, on, on Google, partly on what they can uh, expect people search query, you know, searching for monthly, things like this. And to be honest, it's all a, a bit of a mishmash. There isn't an exact number anywhere. <coughs> So if you're like trying to do keyword research and then you're just going after volume, uh, you know, I just, I really don't think that's, that's beneficial in, in any way. The other flip side of it, Nick, is that um, for some reason, nobody ever talks or ever understands that if something is saying, let's say a thousand, a thousand searches per month for a particular keyword, Position one, you're only looking at, and I think the r r latest that came out a couple of weeks ago on the actual volume that you can expect from a position one is 28.5% of that 1,000, right? So it's not 1,000 either. So it's like, and the, the, those kind of percentages are also going to be slightly changed depending on the actual query. So going after something that you know yes do the keyword research but please don't don't go just you know don't look for stuff just basically but based on um uh guess guesstimated search volume you know create the site or whatever you're doing to the best of your you know th that your users find and users also you know will guide you in the direction that you want but um, yeah, just take keyword volume with a pinch of salt. 
because none of it's really accurate. None of it takes into the account uh, the position one because then keyword things would be pretty crap anyway, wouldn't they? You wouldn't see like, like when you see a thousand a month, you go, oh, but when you realize it's actually a, a pretty little fraction of that. <coughs> so, so yeah, just take it with a pinch of salt, do your keyword research, build your, you know, your idea and your, you know, your, your content plan and whatever you want to do in the site around all the research. Um, but, but don't, base it purely on key on, on volume. That's, I think it's very narrow, narrow minded. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's difficult to say what, what the, uh, what the Udemy course was actually saying, um, and whether this is just about, uh, how, how much they were, uh, placing, how much uh, value they were placing on, 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 uh, uh, on search volume, uh, it could be that search volume was just you need this to make this calculation, but volume is um, is a difficult thing um, because um, your general searches, mortgages say, hundreds of thousands of, of, of searches, but not very good for you as a as a financial services advisor financial advisor rather <clears throat> um and you're never going to ever rank for it at the other end uh, what is more mortgages for uh digital marketing consultants in west sussex by the sea um would be very very uh very very related to the kind of people you you want to 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 sell your uh, mortgages to um in other words the long tail could very very much uh, could be very very much more valuable to you than 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 something that's very general so even if you manage to rank for those high numbers um you may not get anything so you you need to you need to look at what what these key phrases are and the the idea of searcher intent. What are people actually doing when they make that uh, make that search? What what is their intent? Are they just trying to find about find out about mortgages? What are mortgages for? Um, or are they actually near to buying one? And the searches will be different. And I you know that I'm just using mortgages the way that uh, Tim uses pink fluffy elephants here. Um, but pink fluffy elephants are much more interesting than than mortgages. And I wish I'd started with pink fluffy elephants with this. Um, so, and it depends on is is this are, are you looking for a free are you looking for a free tool? Otherwise, there are lots of good paid for tools who will give you a lot more useful insight on key phrases than just search volume dragged from uh, keyword planner um i think that's it thank you david um uh, uh i think i'm just checking keyword tool.io is free to a certain amount. I'm just checking if they do. Um, let me just let me type in mortgages. <laughs> there won't be anything for pink fluffy elephants. Um, elements, elephants. <laughs> uh, let's just see if they give you search volume. They do, but you need to. No, not in the free version. Not in the free version um but it's it's for keyword research it's free you know um uh, it gives you a lot of stuff around a keyword a lot um but you need to go pro if you want to see search volume trends competition blah 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 that kind of stuff um so yeah that, i thought they did i thought they used to they must have done they, yeah oh well things have changed. Google blocking such activities. Yeah, yeah. But the, you know, the the thing is, you, you've keyword keyword research is much more than just getting numbers associated with 
with, with key phrases. Uh, you've got to understand your, uh, you've got to understand who you're writing for, who your customers are. You've got to understand what kind of content, what you actually want to say uh, on your website. Um, you can't just create uh, a website around what you think people are searching for. It's got to have a match with what your your business is doing. Um, you know, unless you could, unless you go out of the way and say, okay, there's lots and lots of searches on pink fluffy elephants. I shall buy some. I shall get a whole. Um, I'll get a whole uh, canister. Not canister. What's the word? Big thing. Um, shipping container. Shipping container. There you are from from uh, from China because there's a there's an opportunity. You've got to have that fit between your keywords, your key phrases, and your business and your customers. Cool, man. That was almost a Tim, wasn't it? Well, no, it, it wasn't <laughs> really. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's on the phone, I think. All right, let's um, move on to number uh, seven. Oh, in, Jim. Why, Sorry, why David, not... what was that? I said, while he's not here, I'm filling in. Uh, <laughs> number seven on our run list from Kanjal Chohan. Chohan, Chohan. Um, it's titled, Is There Any Point in Building backlinks on social bookmarking sites what constitutes a social bookmarking site david Roseanne? well there, there used to be these sites where you put all your bookmarks in i can't remember the names of them now you know we're talking 15 20 years ago that that people used to to build links uh, mm. and there was always a an argument about whether they were they were good ones or bad ones and so on and so forth but we're, Delicious. we're to, sorry? Delicious was one of them. Oh yes, it was, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, there was. One one of the yeah, those things. But um we're back to we're back to building links again. Um and each week we say don't build links in that way unless you're doing lo local citations. Um and also if you start building links from Pinterest and Reddit and mix and scoop it. You could find that, that Google has said, no, we don't like that. Um, ah, Tim has said, no, Inquiry, there was a case of site penalty for someone just relying on Reddit links. I wasn't aware of that, but it doesn't surprise me. <clears throat> Anything that's easy to do, um, sooner or later, Google will start saying, well, you're just doing it for the sake of it. Um, and uh and stamp on it um that that's always a, a good thing to think about is it something you can do simply and mechanically uh, yes it is well don't do it because google has probably already worked out that that's a bad thing and has no value yeah all right um any anybody else Okay, let's um, we'll move on to the next. Um, let me see. Jewel Pule asked a question titled, titled Optimizing for the Wrong Spelling. Jewel said, uh, Hey guys, um, what do you say about optimizing for the wrong spelling? Don't. Um, and I'm spelling that correctly. Um, Google's pretty good at working out um, at wrong vari uh, variations on spellings. But the problem is these days that Google is trying to work out how good quality your content is. And if it's full up with misspellings, if you've got loads of them in your site or loads of them on a page, you're starting to get that the area where Google's saying, no, this site is not good quality and you won't, you'll have trouble ranking. Just go ahead and use the right spelling. 
um, and then let Google sort out the the searches where the searcher is using the wrong spelling. Um, that, that that's strongly what I would say there. Yeah, th th thank you, David. Um, all right, let's move on to number nine. Um, this one from Leanne White. Um, and uh, she said, should I include PDFs uh, in the sitemap.xml? Uh, Leanne said, I have a directory type website advertising businesses, and a lot of them have a PDF on their page. So I have about 63 PDFs. Firstly, should I include them in the sitemap? And can they be canonic canonicalized? Uh, do they need to be canonicalized? Uh, it's just that, that my screaming frog uh, is uh, saying that they miss the canonical. Thanks. Um, 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 um. Um, yes, I think uh, I, I'm just I, I'm just um, uh, I'm just filling in the, the the silence at the moment here while I think this through. Um, the PDFs will have their own URL, so they should and can be put into your sitemap. Um, the yes, yes, I, I would include them. In the site map. Um, now, what was the other bit of this? There was something about canonicalization. Yeah, uh, can they be canonicalized and do they need to be can canonicalized? Because uh, Screaming Frog is um, thinking that they are missing the canonical. Yeah, well, the, I imagine that that's because the the pdf is a pdf version of ah hang on this the let's take this question apart a bit here the que is the question asking that the p the is the is the situation that the PDF is a is duplicate content is a PDF is duplicating what's on the HTML page in which case if if that content is already there then i would make sure that the pdfs aren't known to to google is that what it's asking is that what leanne is asking well um she, she's saying she said, I have a directory type website advertising businesses, and a lot of them have a PDF on their page. So I have about 63 PDFs. Um, so um, businesses um, would often have um, press releases on PDF. If the if the content is useful, then put them in the sitemap. The sitemap won't won't guarantee that the that the PDFs are known to to Google. Um, but I I have found personally that that sitemap is a is is a lot more important than than we as SEOs have been stressing um, having a. Having a good sitemap is a good thing. Yeah. But I'm just a little bit unsure about what the question, question is, and the lack of community answers uh, may also um, chime with my confusion here. Maybe the end could, uh, could clarify. Hmm. Well, they can be canonicalized. Do they need to? Probably not. You can leave it to Google to decide what is the canonical version of that content. Um, but if possible, if you want to ensure that um, you wish to declare 
a canonical version of that content, then um, you can do so. Yeah, I, I suppose that the best way of, of, of responding to Leanne is that this is probably just um, screaming frog wanting to be useful. Would that be fair? Yeah. Do they do they sort of flag any content that doesn't have canonicalization tag? Uh, I mean, self-referencing one. I don't know. So, you know, there, it might be that there is no equivalent page in HTML, for example. Um, but because there is no um, self-canonicalization, as it were, that's being flagged up as such. Uh, maybe. So, I don't know. I personally wouldn't worry too much about it. No. Okay. Well, I know when I click this button, uh, um, it's going to be that time again. Yes, it is. Thank you for watching. Yet again, uh, we've covered all of the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEA Questions Facebook group. Um, and uh, look, I, I will be back at the same time to do this uh, all again. But uh, before we go, I must thank um, people like uh, um, David Rosam, Masataki Wasa, Micah Fisher Kirshner, who had to leave us early, Tim Kappa. Um, who um, was never really with us. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'd like to also thank people like uh, Michael Jim, Martinez. Yes, sorry, David. Jim, Jim, it's you who's never really with us. <laughs> <laughs> I, wake up, I wake up in the middle of the night to do the, the, to, to have, have conversations with you. Sometimes I fall asleep, but I can't help that. Um, well, you, you mean what I say for, makes you fall asleep? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look, um, carry on. No, don't, don't let me interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, did I thank uh, Michael Martinez and... Uh, uh, Brenda Michelin and uh, all of the other people like Michael Stricker. Um, oh, gee, there's so many. All right, um, we'll be back. And but first, we've got to uh, stop recording this one. So I must click the right button. <laughs>